A basic set of luminosity masks consists of three different components. Masks for the lights areas, masks for the dark areas, and for the mid-tone areas. So each of these groups of masks reveals different tonal ranges within your image. And I'm going to show you how to create these basic masks. Now I've got an image here with a very bright sky, a road and some very dark areas in these bushes here. And when you go to the channels palette, you see the usual uh, RGB, red, green and blue channel. And the first step to creating a luminosity mask is to create a selection of the RGB uh, channel, which is the same as we did before. And I'm going to create a new channel from this. So this is a channel with the overall luminosity information of the entire image. Now, you may remember that we've got three different operations in order to combine selections and masks with one another. To add um, selections or masks, subtract them from each other and intersect them. And that's what we're going to use here to create a set of masks from this initial uh, RGB mask. Now, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to select this mask again. You see the marching ants <coughs> in the image. So we've loaded this selection from the mask. And what I'm doing now is I'm intersecting this mask with itself. And to do so, I'm holding down the Shift key, Control key and Alt key at the same time. And I'm clicking on the same mask again. So the first thing I did is I've loaded the selection from the mask. And then I've loaded it again and told Photoshop to intersect this selection with the existing one. So I've intersected the selection with itself. Now from this active selection here on the screen, I'm, I'm creating a new channel. And you can see that this channel is actually darker than the previous one. Because what intersection does is it makes the dark tones darker and it preserves the very bright tones. So the darker a pixel is in the original mask, <clears throat> the, the, the more it will be darkened in the intersected mask. The next step here is to create a selection from this second uh, channel that we've created from the darker one and intersect it with itself again. So if I hold down Shift, Control and Alt, you see this little X um, sign in the cursor and that means when you click on the channel, the selection will be intersected with the current one. So I'm doing this again, I'm creating a new channel here, and you see this new channel is even darker than the existing one. <clears throat> now you can do this very quickly. I'm going to create two more of these. Select the mask, intersect, create new channel. Now the intersection for the new channel is already loaded intersect it again and create a new channel. And you can see these masks get progressively um, darker. And we've got an image um, with some tones that are very dark here on the right side and a sky that is rather blown out. We still have details in the sky that we can pull back and make visible, but as it is right now, the sky is very washed out. And I would like to fix that. And in order to do this, I'm going to first check all these lights masks here to see where the sky is usable. And I think lights 4 is a nice one for our purposes. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to create a new curves layer to add some contrast. Now what you see here is a red overlay on the image. And that may be very confusing if you do this for the first time. And what actually happened here, I forgot to turn off this Lights 4 channel. Whenever you have a channel here selected and you add something to your layers palette, you're going to get this red over overlay as you do for the quick mask mode. If, you, if that happens, just go to the channels palette and see if you have um, left any selection in any of the channels. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go to the mask view and I'm going to apply a levels adjustment. <clears throat> and this level adjustment will allow me to pull up the tones in the sky and darken the foreground. It's, it's basically the same concept as we saw for the channel-based selections here. 
And once I've got a nice selection of the sky, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to pick the lasso tool just as we did in the chains, chain bridge HDR example. And I'm going to go around these areas that are light, but not part of the sky. And I'm going to switch for and background colors to make sure that the background color is black this time. Hit delete. And that is going to fill this area with black. So with just a couple of clicks, we've generated a perfect selection for our sky. The next thing that I want to do is switch the blend mode of this curves layer to luminosity because that doesn't have anything to do with selections or with luminosity masks, but it's a general tip. If you're working on a curves layer on an RGB image, it's always going to uh, also affect the colors of these areas. And you don't want that necessarily because it can uh, introduce strange effects. To avoid this, simply um, select the, the curves or also the levels adjustment layer and switch the blend mode from normal to luminosity. And it's only going to affect the tones and not the colors in your image. Just a general tip. So now I'm going to the uh, adjustment properties panel here and you can see that we actually are only working on the very bright parts of this image. Now I can add another adjustment layer, another curves layer, without this mask, and you can see all the tones in the image here in the histogram. And if I switch to the new or to the sky um, curves layer, you can see that it only operates on these bright parts. Well, let me get rid of this. And let me just get back some of the details here. I'm pulling this down and making sure that the highlights are not do not become dull. So I'm making a bit of an S shape here and you can see all the rest here on the, on the dark side doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the image at all. But now you can see that we've really pulled out some nice details in those highlights in the sky.